Welcome to The Power of the Cross. My name is Angelo Parker. And I'm Kamara Parker. We are the pastors of Faith Family Worship Center here in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, we've been on this broadcast now for a few months now. Hopefully, you're getting to know us. Hopefully, we have some regular viewers by now, and you're getting to know who, who we are. Um, but just for those of you who are just joining in, welcome. We want to take this opportunity to just sit down and just talk about the Word of God. Our church is located in, in the south side of Richmond, Virginia, and we would like to invite you to come out to fellowship with us. Our service times are 9.45 for Sunday school, 11 a.m. for Sunday worship, um, morning worship service. We have a 5 p.m. discipleship training class on Sunday evenings as well. And also we have a Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, so come on out and uh, participate with us. Join us for fellowship, for fun, and family, because that's really what we're about. We're faith, family, worship center. So we are, we're all about faith. We're all about family, and we're all about worshiping the Most High God, Jesus Christ, and serving Him in the best way possible. Amen. You know, our last episodes that we were, we've been talking about who God is, it's very important for people to know who God is. It's, it's important for us to know who we serve. It's important for us to know His personality, His characteristics, and His attributes. Um, and when we look at God, the best way to know anybody, and I said this a few bro um, uh, broadcasts ago, the best way that we know somebody, we know somebody by what? Their name. My name is Angelo. If you call Angelo, you know, well, I know that, I'm, that you're talking to me. If I say Kamar, you know that I'm talking to you. So when we look at God, God has several names that, we, that he goes by. But the most, uh, I guess the most well-known name, for lack of a better term, is the name Jehovah. The name Jehovah stands for covenant God. And in the past few episodes, we've talked about God as being Jehovah Jireh, the, God, the Lord that provides. We've talked about him being, I'm going through my notes here, uh, Jehovah Sikhanu, the Lord our righteousness, and Jehovah M M Kedish, which is the Lord who sanctifies us. When we look at Jehovah and we say the covenant God, Je for instance, Jehovah Jireh, he is the covenant God that provides. He provides everything that we need and most importantly, he provided us a sacrifice. Absolutely. We're going to start this, um, this broadcast talking about Jehovah Shalom. Mm -hmm. And it means the Lord, our peace. Yes. Since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we, you know, if you've been a regular viewer and watched us, you've seen us talk about the, the power of the cross and the, and the essence of what Christ did for us at the cross. We can't have anything from God unless we believe in what Christ accomplished for us at the cross. And one of the things that we are going to talk about when we talk about Jehovah Shalom is that we have peace with God and we have the peace of God. Yes. So it's, it's very interesting that when we talk about peace, we realize that peace is not just the cessation of things going on around us. Peace... You know, we've heard the term inner peace, right? A lot of Eastern religions, they talk about finding inner peace, finding, you know, trying to be centered. You know, we look at Buddhist meditation and mindfulness, and they talk about how you have to center yourself. But with God, that's not, that's not really the peace that we're looking for. We're not looking for an inner peace that comes from our own efforts. We're not looking for an inner peace that comes from our own actions because what we're really missing and what we really need is the sanctifying, excuse me, the justifying peace of God. Mm -hmm. And you just read Romans chapter 5, verse 1, and I, I want you to read it again. Well, before I read the scripture, let us go in prayer oh. so that those that are listening, their minds and their, you know, will be open and the Lord will provide understanding and wisdom to them. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you right now for this opportunity to be in the homes of our viewers, yes, Lord. Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you open up their eyes of understanding, Lord, and you provide your wisdom right now, Father, and the things that we're saying and the word that we're revealing to them, Father. Your word is true, Lord, and let it be true unto them. Father, we thank you right now for ears that are open and eyes that are willing to see. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Got a little ahead of myself there. That's so okay. It's fine. But I, not I say it's fine. Prayer is important. Absolutely. We want to make sure that we start this off the right way. So thank you very much. So read Romans chapter 5 again, verse one. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this, when we talk about justification, justification means that we are right with God. So 
this is what we call justifying peace. So if you were, if you, those of you who are saved, I'll say, I'll mm-hmm. say that, for those of you who have, have been born again and, and have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you realize the, the emptiness that was in your life. You realize the confusion that was in your life. The things that, you know, it was, it was like a vacuum or a void that was going on and you filled it with all kinds of self lusts, desires, right. efforts, everything that, you know, that, that made you feel good. But at the end of it, what it really caused was, a, was more emptiness, was more death. And actually that's what you were, were experiencing because you didn't have the relationship with God that he intended for you to have. Each and every single person that is born, that is, create, that is created by the Father, he wants them to be his child. We're not automatically born as God's children. We, are, we have to be born again in order to be God's children. Absolutely. And to be born again, as it says in John chapter 3, we have to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, as he, as he told Nicodemus when he came to him at night. But that, that relationship, when we say yes to God through Jesus Christ and accept Christ as our Savior, there's a, there's a, just a peace that happens because we are made right with our creator. We are right in the eyes of God. Absolutely. We have to understand that while we were sinners, God considers us his, our, his enemy. Mm-hmm. So we are hostile to God. A lot of people may not like that and they think that, oh, you know, God made me, you know, God is pleased with me. But I'll tell you, if you are a sinner, God can considers you to be his enemy. Yes. And so the only way that we can not be his enemy was through the blood of Jesus Christ, washing and taking away all of our sins. So when the scripture tells us that we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, it's because of what Jesus accomplished at the cross, which shedding of his blood mm-hmm. caused that in essence means that when we accept him and we believe him, that blood took away all of our sins. So justification Mm -hmm. declares us as innocent, even though we are guilty, but because of the blood taking away our sins and taking away the shame and the guilt, God now sees us as innocent. Yeah, I'll say it like this is just as if we haven't sinned. Right. And so we're, we're just as if we've never sinned, just as if nothing had ever happened. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go, you oh, no, go you're, you're fine. But I was going to say this, that be, we can't accomplish our own peace. No. We can't make no. our own peace. You know, sometimes we think we use our actions of, you know, I'm not going to say anything mm-hmm. or I'm not going to war with <laughs> you. I'm not going to argue that that is peace. That's not what we're talking about with Mm-mm. peace. This kind of peace only God can give. And that peace is that we are no longer enemies to God, that we're no longer considered hostile to him because of the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, I was, I was thinking of something uh, someone told me once. You know, they said, Angelo, you're quiet. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, I am. But just because I'm quiet, it doesn't mean that I'm at peace. Right. That's what they told me. Just because you're not saying anything doesn't mean your heart isn't going 100 miles an hour. Just like that duck is on the water and, and it seems like he's just coasting along, but underneath his feet are going a, going 1,000 miles per hour trying to put them along. Right. That's how we are when we think that holding our tongue is peace. Right. That's how we are when we think that um, that doing things and, and making good relationships is, is what brings peace. No, there's only peace when we have peace with God. Absolutely. And so we look at this and we can go to um, Philippians chapter four because we talked about two kinds of peace. And this is Jehovah Shalom. Shalom. He is the covenant God, which we we say Jehovah, covenant God Mm -hmm. of peace. And so when we look at uh, when we look at chapter four of um, Philippians, Philippians. Thank you very Mm -hmm. much. You have it right there. Yep, I have it. Go ahead and read it. So chapter four, verses six and seven. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, this kind of peace that we're referring to, Mm -hmm. In Romans, we were talking about justifying peace. Mm -hmm. But here in Philippians, we're referring to a sanctifying peace. Mm -hmm. This is a peace that as Christians, you know, when we're troubled, uh, something, we're discouraged, you know, we, we should understand and believe because of what happened at the cross, God has given us peace 
for that our hearts and minds can trust him even further. Yes. So in this kind of piece, we don't, no one really uh, does understand this. No. And that's why the scripture tells it, it surpasses all of your understanding. Mm -hmm. Because even in the midst of storms, even in the midst of circumstances, yes. God calms your spirit, calms your heart, and you have a total reliance on Christ yes. to get you through the situation. You know, just like Isaiah says, even when the waters are high, when the fire is roaring, yes. you know, God gives us that peace to go through it because yes. he's there with us. That's the power of the cross. Yes. Knowing that Christ has given his life so that even when the circumstances of life come up and they want to, you know, pull you away or, or discourage you, you have the peace of God that keeps your heart and keeps your mind. I'm going to read uh, John chapter 14, verse 27, um, because it talks about it. This, and this is really the all encompassing peace that Jesus provides. As he says um, in the upper room discord, when he was just about to, to be sacrificed on, on the cross, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So he's talking about something that is outside of us. Mm -hmm. He's talking about something that we can't, like you said, we can't generate, we can't garner, we can't make happen. But it's a peace that is given to us, Absolutely. just like his love. So yes. when we look at agape love, mm -hmm. the love that, that, God, that God had for us and showed us through Jesus Christ, isn't the love that we have as human beings. It's not anything that we can make happen. It's not even the love I, that I have for you. Right. Because that love, it goes past anything that I can muster. But when I love God, oh, yes. he gives me his love. He mm -hmm. shows me how his love works. And just like when I, when, I, when I accept Christ as my Lord and Savior, he said he leaves his peace mm -hmm. with me. It's not just external peace, right. but it's in the midst of the storm, yes. in the midst of trouble, in the midst of trial, mm -hmm. there's calmness yes. because I'm resting in the Lord. You, you know, I, I don't want to for, uh, forsake this part of the scripture because of what Christ did for us at the cross, because our faith is in mm -hmm. what he did for the cross. We can go to God because we have now access with him. Mm -hmm. We're no longer considered hostile. We can go to God with everything by prayer and supplication. Yes. That the power of prayer is is exactly what God left for us so that any time that we were feeling the woes of this world, the woes of life, that we could go to him and since we have access to him mm -hmm. because we are now covered in the blood of Jesus and he sees when he sees us he sees Jesus God is quick to answer our prayers so I will tell you this knowing that God is our peace knowing that he's given us peace I can go to him you can go to him at any mm -hmm. time and ask for what you need this is how our hearts and minds are settled in the power of the cross we, we realize that the power that God has given us the, the and I look at power we talked about a few episodes ago um, it's not just the, the, the dunamis power to live the life, to, to, you know, for us to be changed. It's also even the authority, the right, and the privilege. Yes. Just like a, a cop has the authority to pull you over because he's enforcing the law of the land. Well, the Holy Spirit gives us the power that we need and that we, ha we have the power of the Holy Spirit to go and, 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 and query God, to ask God, to, to go to the very throne room of, of, the, of grace and ask him for what we need. Absolutely. So that's what we're talking about, Jehovah Shalom. He is the covenant God of peace. Absolutely. So now we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. We're going to move on to the next uh, name. So we're going to go to Jehovah Shama. Remember Jehovah, covenant God. And Shama means he is there. Yes. Wherever we go, yes. he's there. Yes. Whatever we get into or wherever, whatever trouble or circumstances we are in, God is always there. He's always present. Yes, because he's God and he's, he's everywhere. But most importantly, he yes. dwells here. Yes. He lives in our own hearts. He lives in, in, as, in the tabernacle of his people. Absolutely. So the Lord is there. For where there are two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. That's Matthew 18 and 20. Throughout scripture, I will tell you this, through the Old and the New Testament, God always makes his presence known. 
He always was with his people in mm -hmm. the Old Testament. You know, that was one of my favorite things growing up, mm -hmm. reading the stories about how God was there, how God delivered his people. Mm -hmm. But then I'll tell you this, is that in the New Testament, we see him there too. We first see him as a man, Jesus Christ. Yes. Then later on, we'll see him as a Holy Spirit yes. that has come on this earth. And he has now, because we are believers, God is living in us. So go to Deuteronomy 31 and 6, because that's when, that, I want to kind of give an Old Testament example and then a, and then a New Testament example of that as well. And then we're going we're gonna to go to, uh, I'll, I'll say we go to Revelation after that. Okay, so Deuteronomy 31 and 6. Mm -hmm. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. Mm -hmm. For the Lord your God, he it is who does go with you. He will not fail you nor forsake you. See, that's the promise that we have from God. He, he will never leave us. He will never forsake us. No matter what circumstances we're in, no matter what's going on with us, he is always present. Why? Because he loves us. Yes. This is the promise that was made to uh, the children of Israel. But because we are the seed of Abraham through faith in Jesus Christ, that promise is ours as well. And even I, I want to I want to talk about Psalm 139 and 8. We don't have to go there, but it, it says, "Where can I go to hide from your presence?" Oh, yes. He said, "If I run to the top of the mountain, that you're there. If I mm -hmm. if I if I make my bed in hell, mm -hmm. you're there. So wherever there is, there is God." I'm, I'm gonna say that again. Wherever there is, so wherever you are, whether you're here or there, God is there as well. Absolutely. Yes. And knowing that God is there as as a young a young child, that was always my way of keeping myself straight. Mm -hmm. But now as an adult, I totally understand. And this is even a child can understand this. When God is there with you and you know who he is and he's your father, mm -hmm. you are comforted by that. You are comforted knowing that God is with you. So this is a this is the thing that I think as Christians we forget, right? We think that God is only in the church building. Right. We think that God is only in uh, in certain places, and we can kind of quote unquote take our religion off the shelf and and act any way that we want to act and be whoever we want to be outside of the guys uh, outside of the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, wherever we are, He's, he's there. there. Because why? We're going to go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter three because we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, whatever we do, God is there with us. I'm not saying that he's doing it with us, but he's there in the presence of us doing what we're doing, good or bad. Right. Let's read it. In 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, know you not that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? Mm -hmm. I should read the next verse. Yep. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Yes. So what he's saying is that we are what? Holy. Holy. And what does mm -hmm. holy mean? It means to be set apart, to be consecrated for God's use. We're not just here. We're right. not just doing stuff. Mm -mm. We're just not claiming as, to be Christians and, and living any way that we want to live. There should be a victory over sin that we have because of the power of Jesus Christ and him crucified. There should be a denial of self because of the fact that Jesus didn't deny us, even right. though we were in sin and Absolutely. trespasses. We need to deny who we are, as it says in Luke 9, 23. We need to deny ourselves, pick up the cross, and follow after him. This is what we have to do. This is what we need to do. So it's not about us. It's not about who we are is, is really about the fact that God is who he is. Absolutely. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. No. And even in the very promise that is in um, at the very end in Revelation, in the book of Revelation, um, chapter 21, verse 3. Uh, 1 through 1 through 3. 3, 3 yes. Mm -hmm. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, mm -hmm. Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. Yes, he is. And he will dwell with them, 
and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Yes. So we looked at it in Deuteronomy and we saw the, the promise to the children of Israel. We looked at it as, as a fulfillment of the promise, but because of the indwelling spirit of the Holy Spirit living inside of each and every single one of us. Mm -hmm. we, we see that because of the promise of Calvary. And now we look at it in the fulfillment and the total fulfillment where Jesus will actually come back and be with his people. We will see him face to face. See, this is the promise of God. I really think that if we, if people, not even just believers, if Christians, not I keep saying Christians, but if people, whether they're Christians or not, believe that God was there, that God is. Exactly. We will have a totally different attitude about how we live our lives. That goes back to the scripture that we started with when we started talking about God. Mm -hmm. First, you know, God says that we must have faith. Yes. And we we know this, but we're telling you this, that we have to have faith in, in a specific kind of faith. Yes, Hebrews 11 and 6. Right. And in Hebrews 11 it tells us that we cannot, God is only pleased when we have faith. It yes. is impossible to please God without faith. Mm -hmm. The kind of faith we need is faith in what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross. And because of that, what Jesus accomplished for us at the cross is intrinsically woven throughout the scriptures. Yes. So when we get to Revelations and we see that we are, you know, we see the new heaven, we see the new earth. Mm -hmm. This is a culmination of all of God's plan. It is. So we're believing all of this. And in order for us to be able to be a part of this new heaven, new earth, mm -hmm. we have to believe who God is. Mm -hmm. we, we have to know you know, these names are important because we have to know who he is. They represent who he is. Yes. And there's, there's no way for us to uh, just bounce over God. No. People say, you know, a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. The reason why that fool says that in their heart is because they don't want to have to face the God of wrath, the God that they're denying, the God that they're uh, just throwing all of their sin and everything in their face. God is, is not pleased with us ignoring who he is. Absolutely. God wants to be acknowledged as Lord, as over all. God wants to be God all by himself. And we, we hear those terms and we say those terms, but there comes a point in time in, some, in somebody's, in anybody's life, where they have to acknowledge that there's something more to life than this. Yes. I, I came to that point several times in my own life, and God always led me back to him. It wasn't never. It was never fulfilled in you know. Okay, it's something more to life than this. Okay, make more money. Right. It's something more to life than this. Oh, uh, you know, start a family. Or something more to life than this. Oh, have kids. No, the, those things, as Solomon will call them, he, he would call them mm -hmm. um, vanity. Yes, he would. Because what you're trying to do is is bring glory to yourself. yourself. But we need to bring glory to God, and how we bring glory to God is through our lives through our dedication, through our belief and our trust in, in the way that he made for us to be able to come to him. Jesus didn't die for no reason. Right. He died for you. He died for me. And when we see him face to face, we're either going to worship him as Lord because he was Lord over all, or we're going to answer to him as judge because we ignored the sacrifice that he made. I'm, I'm so glad that I've accepted him as my Lord and Savior. But Anybody and everybody can can accept them. Even even right now, you can accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. So when we look at it, the covenant, the promise of God, he's there. He doesn't want to be anywhere else. He wants to be right, right. beside you. Yes. He wants to be right with you, mm -hmm. in you, dwelling in. I mean, the whole word spirit means, it means breathe. God mm -hmm. breathe. breathe. So he wants his very breath to be in, his very breath to be in you. And so right now, I'm, I'm going to pray. Uh, because I, I, I think some of us don't realize that God is calling us right now. Yes. That the spirit is moved with that, that, that feeling that you have. God is moving and saying, I want you to really accept me as Lord. I really want you to accept me as Savior. I really want you to know that I am there for you. And I want to give you the peace that, I, that, I, that I've intended for you to have from the beginning. I didn't intend for sin to rule your life. I didn't intend for death and destruction to come upon you. I didn't intend for you to be separated from me at all. I want to reunite oh, um, yes. um, with you. I want yes. to become your, your people, your God, and you can be my people. Amen. So we're going to pray. 
because it's so important for us just to really acknowledge God right now. And I'm, we're going to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus, you, Jesus, Lord, we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory. God, I thank you right now for your Holy Spirit that is moving in this broadcast and is moving on the hearts of the people who are watching. God, I'm asking for you to, to touch their lives, to, to show them that you are there, that you care for them, that you love them. And Holy Spirit, that feeling that you're putting on them right now is, is moving them towards the truth of the gospel. Let them know that there's power in the name of Jesus to break every addiction, every chain, every bondage. Anything that's hindering them or stopping them from accepting Jesus as Lord, it is broken right now in the name of Jesus. Let your peace rule and abide in their heart. Let them see the truth of who you are. God, let this be all for your glory, all for your honor and praise. And we thank you for it and we give you, give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 See, this is what this is all about. It's not about just church. It's really about the power of the cross, the power of what Jesus Christ did. It gives us victory over every situation and circumstance that we come up against. You are victorious in the name of Jesus Christ. You have peace in the name of Jesus Christ. God is there with you right now. Whatever the hurt, whatever the circumstance, God is there and he wants to give you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Just call out to him and reach out to him. This is given to you through the power of the cross. So I'm just going to ask right now for anybody who would like to donate to this to this message, donate to this program. Up on the screen are our Venmo and Facebook applications uh, that we can that you can give. You can give through Venmo through Facebook at FFWCRVA. Uh, you can mail it to um, Faith Family Worship Center at the address below. You know, we just wanted to give you an opportunity to support us and and plant the seed in, in fertile ground. But if not, we'll continue to give this to you anyway. But we thank you right now for God moving on your hearts, and we thank you for what he's doing through the power of the cross. God bless you, and have a wonderful night. Each and every single person that is born, that is, create, that is created by the Father, He wants them to be His child. We're not automatically born as God's children. We, are, we have to be born again in order to be God's children. Thank you for watching The Power of the Cross with Pastors Angelo and Kamara Parker. This program was recorded live at the Faith Family Worship Center. Faith Family Worship Center is located at 2420 Weber Avenue, Richmond. Join us on Sunday mornings with 945 Sunday School and our 11 a.m. worship service. If you would like to make a donation using PayPal or Venmo, use our tag at FFWCRVA. And again, we thank you for watching The Power of the Cross.